Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery Installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware. Welcome back to Falmouth is Cooking. We are still cooking, even after a hiatus of 18, 19 months, I think it was, uh, when we were quarantined and fighting a dreadful pandemic. Uh, but successfully, we are emerging. Um, not saying we've emerged, but we are emerging. And uh, we are here back in the studio at FCTV. Delighted to be back. I'm Gail Blakely, a longtime 35-year food columnist for the Falmouth Enterprise and a culinary instructor at Highfield Hall in downtown Falmouth and a culinary person here on, uh, on television at FCTV. In the past, we've had guest chefs, and I do have one today. So I'm going to introduce you to her. I'm very happy to have you here. Thank happy you. Happy to be Thank here. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Michelle and I have known each other for a while. We both um, do yoga. She does it much better than I do because she's a professional. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those. Mm. And uh, um, I think during the course of the, the time together, we'll probably say one or two namastes. I hope so. Or three or four. Or three or four. For sure. Uh, Michelle is a graduate of the uh, Cambridge School of Culinary Arts and her new well, she's had, you've had a number of yoga studios around, and you and I have taught together at Highfield. We've done uh, some of your plant-based stuff, and uh, um, the new bumper, I call it a bumper sticker, but I think it's probably going to be a, either a brand or something fancy like that, Yeah. Uh, uh, is uh, Nourish Your Inner Glow. Inner Glow is the name of your studios, and Nourish is the food connection. I think it's terrific. Michelle, it's good. It's glad to have you here. Glad to be here. This is very exciting. And what we're doing today for you is um, what we're calling, well, I'm calling, I guess if you agree, Thanksgiving Remixed. Um, we're doing an old turkey recipe of mine from oh, 45 years ago, perhaps, so that does date me. It's actually from the Blue Strawberry Cookbook. Um, James Heller is the, uh, is the author and was the chef at the Blue Strawberry Restaurant. And when I first saw this recipe, I said it can't be done. So I tried it, and I have been repeating it over the years. That's a lot of years to be repeating a recipe. <laughs> so very quickly, I'm going to explain to you why I have an already cooked, not the most beautiful turkey. Um, this cute. Is, this is what, well, and you don't even like turkey because you're a vegetarian, uh, and uh, that's why actually Michelle so is I wearing the, the turkey, turkey apron and today. I'm a turkey napkin pumpkins. today. Um, because towel. you're not coming near this turkey. Nope. No. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, this turkey cooks actually overnight, and uh, I've used it for um, lots of lots of parties because if I want something extra to be able to to serve, and I don't want it my ovens being I only have one oven at home, um, and uh, I want to be able to make sure that uh, I have enough food always. So if I'm roasting one turkey, I may want to do this second one the night before. So we're backing into this. The recipe will be on. Online, and uh, what this is is the finished turkey. So as I garnish this, I'm going to tell you uh, what we're going to be doing next, which is to put a raw turkey. We're going to season it and put it in the oven uh, for 45 minutes, and it thinks at a very, very high temp. And uh, uh, 500, 525, if your home oven will do that. 
and you do that for uh, 45 minutes and then you take the bird out he's singed beautifully and you cover it with uh, cheesecloth or a cotton towel one or the other and uh, then douse that with uh, chicken stock or white wine depending and uh, put it back in the oven cover it I'm sorry cover it very tightly with foil and uh, roast it reduce the heat to 450 and uh, roast it for 90 minutes don't open the oven after that and when you get up in the morning well if you can sleep through the um, turkey fumes smelling so good in the yeah. house um, you will have a fully cooked turkey not the most beautiful bird I'm sure Martha Stewart would probably I don't know makes me want to go mm, but it will taste good I've been using this as I said for many years when I worked with uh, psychiatrically disabled mm -hmm. folks I uh, we always made a Thanksgiving dinner for them the day after Thanksgiving in our day treatment and partial hospital programs and all my program directors learned to make this so we could just serve it and just one quick addendum to that mm -hmm. only once did uh, one of the program directors forget to turn the oven off after the 90 minutes we were obviously in a building that was you know offering hospital services so um, we had to be very careful and uh, mm. she forgot and when we got there the next day somebody from some of the, from the facility not from our agency had gone in and turned the oven to 350 thinking that it was 450 was too hot which it probably was so this turkey this is a uh, 10 pound turkey the turkey that we had that day had shrunk <laughs> down to the size of a large Cornish hen but it was the most delicious turkey. It was sort of like the yeah. most intense, the zen, the essence, I don't mm. know what it would be, of, mm -hmm. of turkey. That's my long-winded story. Of <laughs> the aura yeah. of the turkey. The aura of turkey. So um, we are going to just leave this here to make you uh, hungry, I hope, and, and get you interested in, uh, in what uh, you can do with this. I still suggest you make your regular turkey if you would like on Thanksgiving or not. This one actually would be perfectly fine, I think, to serve. I will be cutting it up in a little bit. And uh, Michelle kindly brought in some rolls so we can do uh, um, some sandwiches if we want. And I also have a very quick gravy to make you. And I am going to take my raw turkey now and season him up. But while I do that, mm -hmm. um, I, because the directions are all on, on the television, why don't you get started? You're going to do two vegetable dishes mm -hmm. and a wonderful dessert. Huh? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Gail. Right. So, You're um, on, kiddo. That's not a tofu turkey, just for everyone out there. It's a real turkey that was caught, if you will. Like this. So, like that, yeah. So through the magic of television, you can see this and then see the finished product. So the course of my life, I've been vegetarian. So I'm 52, and I've been a vegetarian youngster. since 1989. That's where you say, really? You just don't look a day over 39. I said 39. you, youngster. No, I said you. that. <laughs> so I became vegetarian in college um, in 1989, and it stuck with me and stuck with me. When I was in culinary school, I actually had to go to work. Well, not had to go to work, but I did go to work for restaurants in Boston. I cooked on the line professionally, went with my little knives and my, my whites and everything. First day of school or first day of work, the chef said, here, try this duck. I said, oh, God. So I ate it thinking that, you know, I'd get fired if I didn't. So here and there I've had to try things. But my regular diet does not include any animal products. I've recently started eating some eggs. I dabble a little bit with eggs, but that's about it. Um, so again, since it's been so long, there's been many holidays where I haven't had really much to eat other than salad and maybe a few other things. So I've been teaching cooking. Um, for many years now because of that. One of the reasons why I went to school to learn how to cook professionally was so I could adapt it to vegetarianism. I'm mostly plant-based. Um, I teach mostly plant-based, but there was always an option to add something. So the dishes that I'm doing today have no dairy and no meat and um, no eggs. So the couple of sides that we chose with caramelized Brussels sprouts with pomegranate seeds, and that's a recipe by Marcus Samuelson. I've, I've doctored it a little bit. Who wrote and Yes Chef? Is that what he yes wrote? Yes Chef. Yeah, that's his most recent is Yes Chef. Um, I think it's an autobiography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes Chef is a common term used in a kitchen, if you haven't heard that before. And yes, if chef. I may, yes Chef. <laughs> <laughs> Said it many times. Um, so caramelized Brussels sprouts with pomegranate seeds. He teaches, uh, his recipes have a lot of Ethiopian flavor and spices to them. And I have um, some of those, and I'll go through that in a moment. 
And the other is a um, mushroom and radicchio salad. And the radicchio, and I'll talk about that when we get to that, that particular dish, um, is a little bit bitter. And so I teach also from the the point of what's called Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. That's where all my cooking comes in. Um, how to eat, how to nourish yourself um, with hydration and sleep and movement and all of those things. So yoga is actually part of Ayurveda in a way. And radicchio itself is bitter. And in the fall where it's so dry now, we try to stay away from bitter things because it can exasperate the dryness. But the groundedness of the mushrooms, because they'll be cooked, combined with the radicchio is a really beautiful combination of little parsley and some girl, some shallots as well. And that's the one that and has sherry the sherry vinegar. vinegar yeah, and sherry vinegar, which for some reason, I was telling Gail earlier, brings me right into fall. So I don't know for the rest yeah. of you, but sherry vinegar just has that like really cozy feeling. And right? it's hard to find. It I is was hard asking, to find. I was coveting her bottle here because I haven't been able to find it recently. Yeah. Um, but I just want to interrupt yeah. you for one you minute going if I may. I'm going in. All this right. is going in at 500 and uh, um, sorry television, I'm going to be uh, making a um, mess of your oven but I'll come back and clean it. Yeah. And this is in for 45 minutes before it comes out. All right, so, so there's thank splatter you. right there. And let's see how close that is to the top. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Okay. So that'll be in for 45 minutes. 45 and then, minutes. Yep. And then do you turn it down? And then I take it out and I cover it with the um, oh, the cheesecloth cheese cloth and the, the broth mm -hmm. of the wine and then seal it with uh, foil, never to be opened again until tomorrow never. morning. Unless, and then it will look yep. like that. Yep, exactly. That's what it is. Okay. All right. So back to Sherry. Back to Sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar. So we're moving on with our caramelized Brussels sprouts with pomegranate seeds. So pomegranate seeds have tremendous health benefits. I won't get into all of those benefits. Now you can certainly Google them while you're watching our show. Um, but this recipe combines Brussels sprouts, has a little extra virgin olive oil. We use a little for um, herbs. We're using rosemary. Um, and something called berbere, which is a blend of chilies, garlic, sometimes fenugreek, and warm spices, like allspice and cinnamon. So what it's is sort that? of a hot and spicy. Berbere. Berbere. Is that um, African? It's an, it's an Ethiopian. It's yep, Ethiopian. it's an Ethiopian yes. spice Marcus, blend. Yeah. From Marcus, is that yep. it? It's here. Oh, so okay. with some parsley added bowls. to it, yeah. These came from the spice and tea shop at Mashpee Commons. These are very pretty. May Maybe I? they'll they'll supply us with bowls. And Good it's idea. Kind of funky, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is funky. Yeah, I added a few other spices to it smoky. to bring it. Yeah, I wanted that little sm mm. more smoky, and that's from the chilies for sure. Okay. Um, so the first thing is, after her turkey comes out, we're going to um, actually the mushrooms. We can probably sauté in the stove too, but this recipe calls for um, the Brussels sprouts to go in the oven, and I think it's really nice to caramelize them on the stove. So we'll have two pans going. So the first thing is, I'm going to take my Brussels sprouts with some olive oil and rosemary and the spices. So we'll add a little bit of olive oil here. Some garlic and the I'm garlic is chef. nice Remember and that. sliced. I'm checking my phone to make sure it's not going to go off when the alarm goes off for 45 minutes. Um, we don't want to hear my dancing so music. Did, oh, <laughs> did the um, when the turkey was left on overnight, did the alarm go off? Did, like, no, because it never smoked. Oh, no, interesting. It never, no. That's so interesting. And it was so good, but it was so tiny. It didn't serve 50 people like it was. Supposed oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to mix these guys up a little okay. bit. So we have our Brussels sprouts and um, olive oil, garlic, some rosemary, and I like to leave rosemary. I sometimes I just like to leave it in leaves. I think it's so pretty. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's very strong, don't you think? It's very strong. This is nice and fresh. Smell that. Mm, it's beauty. a good one. Yes, so I, I, I like things a little yet. rustic sometimes. So for the purposes of today, and you have that choice when you're making this, you can certainly chop it up. Um, we're going to leave it because it's really, really fragrant. So you don't need a ton of it. And mix that up. When I was in college, we used to make this of spicy chicken, because I ate chicken before 1989. So we used to make spicy chicken, and for those who didn't like garlic, we left things in really like big slices so people could pick out the garlic. After Then I started picking out the chicken and just eating the, the rice and <laughs> sauce, but that's not the story. <laughs> All right, so the the sprout, here the sprouts would go in the oven, but now we're going to put them in a pan and let them caramelize right on the stove. So those are ready to all go. Right, so you would like me to get this on. one on. So okay. sous chef. Here we go. Let's see. Thank After you. all this time, if I can do this. 
Oh, I did. Okay. All right. So we're back with our Brussels sprouts. So we're going to turn this oven on. on. We're going to go to about burner. a medium high. All right. And the recipe calls for the Brussels sprouts to go in the oven to get caramelized. I think it's kind of cool. And it's a really nice visual to see the Brussels sprouts on the, on the stove. So uh, once this gets hot, we'll put the Brussels sprouts in. And then in the other pan, I'm going to put this guy on too. I'm going to go ahead and start to um, cook the shallots, peanuts, and then I'm going to add everything to the bigger pan. And then our Brussels sprouts will be done. Okay. So that'll sit off to the side. So okay. is this burner on too? No. What I'm going to do is um, move my turkey okay. to here. Oh, maybe put it up here instead. And let's cook up there. Do that. All right. Awesome. All right. So give me a minute. Do you want it on? Yes, please. <laughs> You so while a lot of things, don't I you? want so much, I want so much. So while we're getting Whoa. the burners ready and the pans nice and hot to cook in, I'm going to talk about pomegranate seeds. So pomegranate seeds have tons and tons of vitamins. Um, they're really, really good for you. They're a great little snack. But how do you actually cut a pomegranate? So that's left up to me to show you. And it's a really funky thing. So this is what a pomegranate looks like. These are what seeds look like. So we want to go from somewhere between here and here. But these seeds are frozen. Yeah, they are frozen. So in Thank case goodness, you can always yeah, find some. So in case you can, you can usually find pomegranates at any grocery store, but if you can't, then uh, it's a Woodstock brand. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like. Woodstock pomegranate, organic pomegranate kernels. This is the wrapper for it and they come out like this now we tried them we tested right they're kind of wet i let them defrost um they taste like pomegranate they're just kind of vibrant like, they're not as vibrant so i'll show you the difference what you would do is we make a cut in the pomegranate and the top comes off so i have this i never knew what this knife was for in my drawer now I know what it's for. It's to cut a pomegranate. <laughs> I thought it was a cheese knife. Right, and it could be it's, it's a cheese knife. <laughs> so I'm basically you cutting around. Oh, good. All right, so let's add in. So we're going to put Brussels sprouts are going first. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So when you're cooking Brussels sprouts, make sure the pan's not overcrowded. This is probably perfect. And that way we can Over have oil. a... Thank you. I'm going to keep the spoon. And I'm going to Thank you. So back to our little friend, the pomegranate. So all I'm going to do, and I'm actually just switched out to my other knife, and I'll show you why in a second. So there's all of these segments, like a grapefruit would be, on the side. So what I'm hoping to do is get in here. So this guy comes out. It worked, worked earlier, so let's see. The idea of using the knife with the little tip is that it curves under. But you can use a regular paring knife. That's all I'm using now. And then that comes off. And if you can see, that's beautiful. Yeah, so the seeds are here. So now, if I take, I have one that we already started earlier. So then I'll take this guy and flip it over. Now, one of the tricks is that you take all the stuff away, and I'll start to quarter down the sides where I can see some of the flesh. And then once I quarter down, if you peel it back, here are all the seeds. But the old trick, I'm going to show you something very quickly with this one. It's just to be careful you don't, ooh, sizzling is starting. So you cut down from the vein. I, my, it looked it. like a murder scene in my house yeah. this morning when I was playing. I'll so basically you. you take a, Oh, this is what you do. You just tap and tap and tap so ah. the seeds come out. Maybe turn this down a little bit. Mm -hmm. right, awesome. And then that pan is going, so we're going to add in a little bit of olive oil. Ooh, smell that rosemary. Mm. Gonna, mm, a little more. Good. We're going to add the shallots and the peanuts to this one. Okay. And you want it on? I think medium. Okay. Maybe at, at like six. Okay. Better than mm -hmm. seven because it's yeah. taking a long time. I don't know why. And we want those shallots to get almost crispy, don't mm -hmm. we? Although then we're also cooking the mushrooms on top of it. So. Well, the mushrooms go in the salad. This is for the Brussels sprouts. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We'll just add all this. So oh, wow. Yeah, so when cooking nuts, oh, um, once again, I wish you could smell a vision. Yeah. We need smell a vision. We'll put that in the budget for next year. <laughs> Back to our, our uh, pomegranate.
pomegranate. So what the seeds come out looking like are these gorgeous little jewels. So if you can see, excuse the parsley, if you can see the frozen ones compared to the fresh. I mean, fresh is best as we know, but in a pinch you can use the frozen and you have both. So we'll have some pomegranates to throw right in the, um, to mix in with the Brussels sprouts to brighten up the color, gives us a boost our, um, boost the nutrition. So we're gonna leave that as here for now while that is cooking. I'm sorry, Michelle, I'm having technical problems Ooh. here. Well, these are brightening up. So if you can see the Brussels sprouts, they're getting nice and bright green. You wanna get them so that they're a little bit tender but have some caramelization. All caramelization means really is sugars coming out and the sugars being um, um, cooked and heated. And then that gives this really nice brown color. So we have garlic in here as well. And if you can see the garlic has a little bit of brownness to it. So that's what we're looking for on the Brussels sprouts as yep. well. That's yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. So they look so happy and green. You know, it's funny, Brussels sprouts are sort of like the new green bean casserole. It's funny because I don't really see any green bean casseroles anymore. Um, yeah, let's look for a... The old one with the wonderful, that we all loved with the... Um, the onions on top? Yeah. Fried onions. So I'm gonna change sides with you for okay. one second to see how we're doing over here. Put your hand and feel it that's hot. It doesn't nope. seem to be coming up. Nope. I know. So I think what we'll do is maybe switch this to that burner and put these guys on the hot one. What do you All think? Right. Um, see, there isn't a burner there. Oh. So oh, it's here. Yeah, so let's move this. So you're gonna edit this that part out as we're trying All to right. figure out what a, <laughs> how to work a stove. <laughs> okay, how to work a stove. Yeah. That's uh, well, stove 101. I think we need a course. To, we after need a 18 course. months, we're at stove 102. But oh gosh, yeah. You wouldn't know. So this is gonna crisp up and then I'll add the Brussels sprouts. We'll add a little maple syrup to it and um, a little bit more of the rosemary. So there's some re nice and fresh for that vibrancy of flavor and there's some that's cooked and that brings out a different flavor. I'm using fresh rosemary as opposed to dried. Fresh is always best. We love fresh everything. Fresh, fresh, fresh. And if in a real pinch, Frozen. Well, you can or, do frozen yeah. like we have the pomegranate yeah. seeds. And frozen vegetables are not that bad, are they? No, frozen vegetables are frozen fresh. So they're I mean, it's right better to have a bag of green beans than it is to have a bag of potato chips, right? Frozen green beans. Yeah, but chips are good chips. too sometimes. But yeah. if we're talking green beans, better to have okay. the fresh ones, the right. frozen ones if you can't get fresh. Um, anytime you're looking for a vegetable, don't, don't forget that where most of you who are watching this live on Cape or live in New England and not everything is readily available, but by the magic of the Industrial Revolution, we're able to have everything and transportation and all that. So that's why we get foods from so many different places now. Um, but if you can't find something, you can have it frozen for sure. Um, I won't go on my whole kick of... Uh, Eating local. I won't, I won't do that to you now. Okay. That's another day. That's another day. That's another day. So. We try. We, yeah, exactly. All right, so we have our maple syrup. We're going to get some of these things out of the way. Michelle, you know what I'm thinking? What? This is your pan, and I'm wondering if it's not an induction surface pan. Do you know, have you used <gasps> it on induction before? Oh. Because that's why it's not going on. Isn't that See, interesting? That one is. All right. So let's well, guess what so we can here. add. Maybe add this into there. Okay, that's what happens. Okay. Cool. So see, it keeps going off on me, and it keeps I going see. around. So that means um, that. All right. Let's take this guy. Let's move this. Maybe we'll leave it there. I guess for now, and then just, yeah. just scrape that in. Okay. So you're going to edit all this out. Maybe as, not. Or not. I mean, this is what happens when you cook at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, for sure. I think it's better to see our mistakes or see our struggles. See our struggles, yeah. I mean, everything works because it's food. I'm sorry. Everything works because it's food and it's gonna eventually taste really great. But so already here we have the Brussels sprouts. See so yeah, that nice caramelization right there? It's not burnt. Burning is one thing, caramelization is something else. What did Julia say? You're alone in the kitchen? Or what um, happens in the kitchen stays, stays in, in the, the kitchen? kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> now we're in television. <laughs> exactly. All right, so, poke that guy. 
So the shallots will release some water. They'll start to, um, some of them are in rings, some of them are together. All you try to separate inside. them a little bit for you. Yeah, okay. why not? Okay. And then the last piece is adding the parsley. So I have some chopped parsley and shot glass. Detail. It makes a great little thing for your herbs. Shot glass is multi purpose. Does that look good? This is really very nice. Yeah. Did Marcus Samuelson have anything to say about this, or was it just... No, uh, it's a pretty you know, straightforward yeah. dish. So the, the influences are the peanuts. So let's talk about a couple of things about the dish. So peanut allergies, you know, with having family over. Leave the peanuts out. If you want to use a different nut, go for it. If you want to use different herbs, go for it. The thing, one of the things that's so important to understand um, is that when we have a base dish, so if the base dish calls, you don't have shallots, you can't find shallots, right? Use onion. So if you don't like Brussels sprouts, what about a different kind of a green? Here you could do green beans if you want, instead of green bean casserole. You could do green beans instead of the Brussels sprouts, do everything the same. You don't want to make the, the spice blend. You know, use a little bit of chili powder or a little bit of salt and pepper. So I haven't even added salt and pepper to this yet. It doesn't need it yet. We'll add it at the end. I have found myself using chili powder more often yeah. than not. A lot so of the recipes nowadays are calling for cayenne and hot smoked paprika. Sometimes I just find both of those to be really harsh. So I, uh, I really do like the um, chili powder, which is a blend of powders. Yeah. Right? It's a blend of chili. So I'm going to go ahead right. and add the maple syrup now. Mm -hmm. Wait till, mm -hmm. ooh, here comes the smell of vision, a little sh the sherry vinegar. Mm. Oh, mm. send it their way. Beautiful. You see all that smoke? That's just the love on the stove. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I know. So we're going to pull it off the heat now. <laughs> And add, I don't know if we need salt and pepper, but this looks delicious. To me, it looks great. So this is the kind of food I eat. Um, I hope you enjoy it if you make it at home. And we'll right. test it at the end yes, we will. with our turkey. Give it a chance to sort of melt a yeah, little bit. we're going to let it sit. And then I'll add the pomegranate seeds before we eat. So, it's, okay. um, so the seeds don't cook, so those still keep their vibrancy. So tell me one thing here, yeah. please. Um, why no salt and pepper? I use salt, oh, yeah, and, pepper salt and pepper as I, as I cook all the time. Because um, of the spices. So there's oh. a lot of spices in there and anyway. And was salt on the peanuts? The peanuts were salted. Okay. That's a great yeah, okay. that's a great point. So that's another point too. If you are cooking with nuts, you usually use unsalted and raw. But I got roasted salted, and that saves you a step in a sense. So you don't have to roast okay, them ahead of just time. Just be aware. Just yes. be aware. And you just have to adjust your seasonings. Okay. So cooking really is is so intuitive. It's it's about what you enjoy, what you um, what your family enjoys. My family and the two of us, I should say, we eat completely different. So I eat this and my other half does not. He eats all brown foods and I eat all green foods. And that makes a happy home. <laughs> Good. Good. All right, so that's our Brussels sprouts. Okay. And I'm gonna shift over ah. now into our next recipe. It should be our radicchio salad. Our radicchio salad, all right. So getting some of these things out of the way. And we're gonna need another the pan olive oil. for roasting the great. mushrooms and stuff, right? So let me uh -huh. get that because the other one didn't work. I'm glad I realized that because I couldn't figure out I was moving it all I over. did not even think about it. I was thinking about the depth of the pan. For those of you who don't have induction cooking at home, uh, I really love it. I like it as much as gas. I don't know how you feel about it. Um, but I love the one induction. we have at Highfield. And yeah, I really like it this just one. takes a little getting used to, that's yeah. all. Um, but what I will say, so this pan is uh, Cuisinart. This has enough um, non-aluminum non non, to yeah. be able to, uh, okay. to, to do that. Great. Uh, that's why this was not working. It just kept going off. And my other one, my at home beeps and tells me. I have all these beeps on my stove. Tell me oh, what to do. And then who that knows would what freak the me out, yet. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do the right. same thing with the, um, okay. I think, we, yeah, instead of using the oven, we'll use the stove tops. That way you can see the things as they cook. So the next one is our roasted mushroom and radicchio salad. So radicchio. But the radicchio is, is this not cute little guy. So it's not a cabbage, it's actually a chicory. 
and it's and it's not roasted. It's the mushrooms that are roasted. The mushrooms right? are getting okay. roasted. The the um, okay. radicchio is not. Okay. So you peel out the uh, the um, outer layers, and then underneath is just this like cute it's little guy. Beautiful. beautiful. Hmm. Yeah. So all I did was I peeled one ahead of time and put it in some water. So you putting this in water, the leaves in water, takes a little bit of the bitterness out of it. So as I mentioned before, having the bitter flavor in the fall can exasperate dryness, and that dryness can just come in anything, your skin, your hair, your nails. Um, also in your digestion, you might have some... Uh, reciprocal effects from dryness and digestion which I will not go into in the kitchen so okay. yes that's for another day okay. um, so our pan is getting nice and hot cool. I've been soaking these to take the bitterness out and I'll drain this after because when we present it I'll put on a nice platter with the the leaves and then the mushrooms and shallots so first thing is we will put a little olive oil in the pan whoa and that's a hot pan all right you want it lower yes please so that going to come right off. Okay. So sometimes when you're working in your own kitchen, especially if you're working with a new oven or a new range, it's testing things out just like we are right now. Um, we're going to let that cool down. Is that olive oil? It is olive oil. So that's one of the reasons it's smoking yep. so much. As a lower smoke point. So some of the oils, this is simply for flavor. Oils like grapeseed, I think even sunflower has a higher smoke point. Grapeseed has a higher one for sure. I honestly cook everything in coconut oil, but for today with some of the, the bigger flavors, coconut oil didn't mix with these recipes. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think you sweet? can still taste it. It just gives that coconutty flavor. Really? Okay. Yeah. I cook, you know, I cook most of it with another pan, actually. No. Sorry to right, say. So, okay. So we're just going to. This is that. not only oven, induction oven 101, and cooking 101, but it's also problem solving 101. Want to get me this a, gets edited out. a paper towel? Yes. So to we'll, wipe this and then out. we can wipe out the, yeah. That pan stayed you hot a good long time. Little. Oh, actually, this one probably isn't that hot anymore. Oh, a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is going to be for your mushrooms. You're more comfortable with this pan. Yeah. Okay. Anything for the chef's comfort. It's all about the chef's comfort. Absolutely. And then I think the heat on very, um, doesn't need to be that hot. Maybe about, if it goes up to nine, you said, right? Yeah. So we'll go use. Um, How about two? Mm, three, four? Three. And three. Three you got. All right, thank you. Yes, chef. Yes, Chef. <laughs> Love it. All right, so we're going to saute mushrooms. Yep. We're going to saute the shallots, um, shallots first, first okay. and we'll add the mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Normally, um, when I've done this dish in the past, we've done mm -hmm. it in the oven. We've done it in a large um, sheet pan and uh, um, roasted off the shallots for about 15 minutes till they got almost crispy, and then added the mushrooms and the uh, the wonderful umami of the mushrooms is, is yeah. just terrific. It's just so intensified when it's when they're roasted. And then we just toss that in a big bowl with uh, um, the radicchio and the seasoning. And it's so nice. It's so simple. Warm, it can be served. Room temp. I haven't had it cold, um, but I've had it those ways. Room temp and a little warm is nice. And we think about how we eat in the fall as well. We want to eat foods that keep us warm. You know, fall, mm -hmm. fall eating is really... Um, much more about intuition and you know I, I do a lot of study at Kripalu in the Berkshires and that might be a little too much but um, is the pan hot? Yep. I'll make it hotter. Yeah. It's on five now. Okay, okay. good. Kripalu. So um, Chef Jeremy told us, I studied with him and he told us that he took the salad bar off um, in the winter, and he never heard oh. so much um, <laughs> hate mail, if you will, from yogis, so it's not really hate mail, but um, so much um, negative. negative about bringing the salad bar back. So salads are, um, when they're dry, when you're eating vegetables that are cold and raw, they have a drier effect on the system. So again, anything like this you would cook. So where Gail was saying about the salad in particular, okay, we're getting a little sizzle on our shallots now, um, is eating this salad particularly um, warm. So I'll actually start to get a platter together. 
is all we're going to do is saute our shallots. Right. I'm going to add the mushrooms. And um, I'm going to actually layer the radicchio on a platter and pour it over. And that would be really pretty. So there's so many ways you can put it together. How do you think about that? It's going to be nice. OK. We tossed it all together, but we were also making about 15 other dishes. So oh. you're losing your turkey there. I lost my turkey. <laughs> yeah. And our turkey has another 15 minutes to go. Great. And then uh, it'll be almost have done. The that peanuts. has the peanuts. So. All right. That's now, fine. if you are dealing with allergies, you need to be real when careful. When you're, yes. So, um, but right now, we're not. We're not. And I like to separate the shallots mm -hmm. because they get crispier. And also, also because the little rings. You know. I find that uh, shallots are very, mm -hmm. are very harsh. Um, I always soak them up for a little bit in oh, some lemon juice idea. and mm -hmm. water if I'm putting them in a salad. Um, just taking off some of the skins here. So I call it the paper. The paper, all right. <laughs> the shallot paper. The, the shallot yeah. paper. But um, because I find them so harsh, I like to make them smaller, smaller pieces. And uh, here we have the smaller pieces so that you don't get a big bite of a shallot. Right. Well, and the, and the idea of crisping idea? them up, too. Um, a little right turkey. Here. Yeah, so this is cold right here, right? Uh -huh. Correct. Okay, thank you. And remember that it won't go on if it doesn't if it have doesn't the right amount of metal in it. So. That's so interesting. I didn't know that's how it, how it works. Learn something new every day. Good. All right, so I'll take a few of the leaves out that have been soaking. I'll just pat, dry, pat them dry. I'll do that for you, and you can start arranging. How's that? Okay. We'll switch places again. Well, let's get our Brussels sprouts on another platter. I think this is the smaller of the two. Or they can go in a bowl. So when you're serving on Thanksgiving, you could do a couple of things. You could have, we do family style at my mom's now, my parents' house, which is really nice. And we all like kind of line up and do buffet style. That's fun. You could have things obviously not in a pot, but it's nice to pl platter things up. I mean, we could even do this as like the half, half and half, you know? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to take the Brussels sprouts and I'll just add them right here now. Yeah. And then you're going to start arranging these, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. See? Just mm -hmm. a little, little yum yum. Mm-hmm. And then the radicchio, let's see, it's, I'm going to add the mushrooms in just a, about a minute or so. Shallots have a nice sweet smell when they're being cooked. I just, I love that. It reminds me of smelling a white onion. I have this thing I, when I call my mom when I'm cooking. Anytime I'm cooking with onions and carrots and celery, I, it's like, it smells like my mom's house. It smells like Thanksgiving, so I usually call her and say, Mom, I'm, my house smells like you. <laughs> just kind of fun. All right, so these are still kind of wet. Let's get these guys underneath. I'm going to just arrange these a little yeah. bit if I may. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to go ahead in with some of the mushrooms now. This so this is really a blend good, of white mushrooms and baby bellas. So we'll dig down for the baby bellas. I like the baby bellas. They cook faster, <laughs> cook a little bit faster than the the other portobellas. Um, when you're cooking mushrooms, they cook down pretty fast. They cook down small. So. And the shallot mushroom blend, like from here, if you wanted to, you could add some cream to this. You could make a, um, reduce it down, making a duck cell, which is like, Oh, so delicious. No salt and pepper. I'm going to go in with some salt and pepper. Yeah, I just want to get the mushrooms kind of mixed in a little bit. I'm using this tricolor blend on the pepper. Did you see Ina Garten's new show? Um, she's got a new, uh, I think it's season 28. 
and she was on Sunday was the first one mm. doing comfort food, and it was wonderful. But she had a pepper grinder that was really quite amazing. Ooh. Um, I imagine it's going to be on everybody's wish list for, uh, for Christmas. It's like, I think Ina Garten's wish is like bigger than Oprah now <laughs> <laughs> with Oprah's stuff. So I'm going to let this sit for a second. And so we have our Brussels sprouts. We'll add the pomegranate seeds. Mm -hmm. Where's that plat? The Brussels sprouts right, are right back here. here. So yeah. I'll bring this back here for that. Okay. You're going to do fresh ones or those? Oh, I uh, I can do either. I'll probably okay. add a few of these. Okay. I'm going to add them now, actually. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep sauteing these so that they really um, crisp up. Yeah. We'll do this in two stages, Michelle. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So this calls for roasting in the oven for about 25 minutes. But since we're doing it on the stove, it goes a little bit faster. And the only last things that we have to do is add some parsley, a little bit of sherry vinegar. Again, the sherry vinegar is carried in both dishes, which is really nice when you're eating a meal, when you have sides that go together and that the sides complement each other with the different herbs. So what herbs did you use on your turkey, Gail? Uh, the dried mix that I used is really a grilling mix. It's um, just a poultry grilling mix that has sage, rosemary, um, probably ground bay leaf, uh, parsley, thyme, and marjoram, I would, I would guess. Nice. And some salt. Uh, and then that was rubbed all over. I think you saw me do that before. Uh, and then the only things I use now are the gar to garnish with mm -hmm. the fresh sage and, and that kind of, that's, kind of thing that's right gorgeous. there. That's gorgeous. Yeah, um, you could sage zoom in really on that pretty. sage. It looks beautiful. And, uh, and the little existing marigolds if there are any or nasturtiums i actually still have nasturtiums in do my you? garden yeah, yeah i'm going to do a quick chef trick okay just because it's fun oh you're going to show i'm going to do i'm going to show off now so we just do a little bit of woo. Okay. there we go okay beautiful that's beautiful. all okay <laughs> all right. this is taking this on a lot of color i hope yeah. you can see that and parsley uh, we can do the a aroma head is of terrific. sherry vinegar and i'm going to set this off to the side we could probably add more mushrooms, but for I think for now we're good. I think probably for our purposes of yeah. And um, pretty soon the turkey will be out. Yeah. And we'll get. I think we should actually probably sauté up a second um, panful to go on there. Um, we have our dessert to make. Yes. So desserts uh, like um, ready to go. Ready to go. Okay. Yep. We want to talk about all the steps that were involved. In mm -hmm. that, so. Okay. You want, you want this darker, don't you? I think they're actually good. Really? Yeah, okay. but they can go another couple of minutes. Sure. So the colors change, if you remember how they started. This is what the mushrooms look like, if we can do a side to side on the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are just white mushrooms and, and baby bellas mixed, and these are the raw ones. We all know what raw mushrooms look like, but when they're mixed with the shallots, it's just olive oil, a little salt and pepper. So I'm stirring this up to get the baby bellas on top. They're just a little hardier. You know, white mushrooms or white mushrooms are kind of an all-purpose, but baby bellas have that nice hardier flavor, nice earthy. And it's a good balance with the radicchio. One of the things I've learned over my years of, of cooking, um, and especially cooking in a public forum like this, is to have patience. And I, you know, I find myself <laughs> stirring this, and I realize that what has to happen is that the mushrooms, let they let it be so that they can pick up the heat, change the color, caramelize, and do what they what I want them to do. Yeah. And all the stirring in the world is not going to make that happen any faster. And even the shallots, they're getting that beautiful color now, and they're a little yeah. translucent And almost. this is cooking at medium high. This is cooking at medium high. Okay. Perfect. So if they were in the oven, it would crisp up a little bit differently. They would cook a little bit differently just because of the nature of being in an oven as opposed to a stovetop. But this is an option. This is in a way, we're steaming option. them. Yeah. Um, but yep. if you were doing them in the oven, mm -hmm. you'd have them all spread out and the juices would evaporate rather than have them actually simmer in mm -hmm. the juices, which is what's going on now. Yeah. And uh, the juices evaporate and then they get the crispy, crispy yeah. edges. So. This is probably a good time to talk about where we buy our food. Okay. Yeah. I'm just locally, thinking about of that. Course. We buy locally, of course. <laughs> so yeah. I shop at um, Rory's Market. I shop there a lot. I do find that Where um, is Rory's? Rory's Market is at Mashpee Commons, also in, on 28 in Dennisport. 
And um, it's an organic market. It's an organic market. They have a wonderful selection. They're very sweet. They're awesome people. And they really believe in um, supporting health and all of your health needs through food and through supplements and that kind of thing. They have a kitchen. You can get meals made there. Oh, really? um, yep. So you can get meals. They do pre made meals. They have a really good chocolate pudding. I, th I don't know if it's a chocolate avocado pudding, but that's. Ooh. That's a recipe for the next time. Okay. We'll, do the, we'll do that another day, but okay. chocolate avocado pudding is so good. Um, yeah, they're pretty amazing. I will say sometimes it's pricier, um, but you can find what you're looking for, certainly. And if you're concerned with buying things that are more organic or more free range, even if you're buying your turkey, if you're buying your eggs, anything, you can find everything at Rory's. Um, and they'll order for you if they, they don't They can order things it. for you as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, being, I live in Mashpee, so that's where I go, as well as Stop and Shop has a really great natural produce section, and I most recently found that Market Basket has the best organic produce, and the prices are amazing. Wow. I know. As well as a wonderful, <laughs> um, what is it, uh, um, international section. Oh, yeah, for sure. Really, really for good sure. All right, I think this guy looks good, and maybe we can pull that off the stove. You think so? Yeah. I'm just going to turn it off, then. I think we just... Okay. Okay, that's what happens there. So yeah, we'll let this off. sit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just set it. Oh, I guess we can just stay on there because it's induction. Right. Um, all right, so we're going to change gears and get ready for dessert. Okay. Or we, before we do that, we're going to yeah, check on your finish, turkey. Let's get the turkey part done. All right. Um, so let's bring this over. And, uh, yeah, this looks nice. Oh, this nice. is beautiful, Michelle. Okay. Now, this isn't hot anymore, this burner. So that's so cool. See? Really? <gasps> I need one of those in my home. I know. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. I need that in my life. All right. So the next couple of things, it's a, to add this to the radicchio, top it with a little parsley, drizzle it with some cherry vinegar and olive oil. Okay. You want to get that? Yeah. And how would you put it together? Because you've made this too. Um, I would probably take a few more leaves of radicchio and mm -hmm. I would radicchio, radicchio. Radicchio. She says radicchio, I say radicchio, but we both know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I would t uh, julienne a couple leaves. Oh, that's a nice idea. And then I would idea. add it to that and toss it all together. All right, well let's... Toss it all on, rather. For How's TV that? purposes, we'll shred a little bit, maybe? Fine, yeah. Add a little bit. You can heat it up. Radicchio can be cooked. Again, it's a chicory. So think of, and the way it's grown is really interesting. It has like a second growing. It's cut back and then it grows really? again. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, it's interesting. Just to get that wilted a little bit. And here amongst our fresh garnish, despite being washed, is a little spider. Oh. He was hungry. Yeah. He, he said, wanted that to, looks he awfully wanted to be on good. TV. Looks yeah. awfully good, Michelle, so. Okay. Usually when I'm cooking, even at home, even just for the two of us, um, sometimes I will just keep a little bouquet of fresh herbs and at the very end just add a tiny bit of, uh, yeah. of fresh herbs to whatever it is I'm serving. Uh, pizza always, some basil, but uh, not, uh, um, not always the herbs that are in the dish, which is what Ina always recommends. Ms. Garten. Ms. Garten. I think there's enough olive oil in here, so I'm okay. just going to add a little bit of the sherry vinegar. Okay. I'll season it as well. I'm going to now put this right on top of the radicchio. Okay. Radicchio. And call whichever. It whichever we want to call it today. Oh, those are wonderful. The Brussels sprouts? The no, I had a mushroom. Oh, good. Mm. So it's a kind Pretty. of a lot. So let's get um, some garnish on there now. And what's really nice is that this is going to be served with the turkey. So any of the garnishes from the turkey can carry over, mm -hmm. not the turkey mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. if you will. But maybe some of this beautiful rosemary. Was this from your home? Uh-huh. Okay, so we might even just lay some rosemary onto the side mm -hmm. a little bit. We can add some parsley. In my parsley, I got this mystery green. It looks oh. like a kale or something, isn't it? Looks this is like a weed. I'm sorry, it looks that like crazy? a weed. Okay, fine. No, it's you know weed. what it looks like? Sorrel. Is it bitter? Is it, it sour? It smells like rosemary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> doesn't it? Oh, try it, yeah. Mm. So the trick when you're testing out herbs, too, in, um, to smell it, if you're walking by a lovely garden, like at Highfield Hall, is just to you rub a little leaf and smell it. It's so good with mint. It's amazing. It tastes like a green leaf. <laughs> it tastes like a green leaf. It's probably like... 
I don't think it's chicory, but it's like a. It's yeah. It, it doesn't does, look like doesn't, a, it looks like either arugula or sorrel yeah. or dandelion, and so they're all the yeah, same family. Exactly. Yeah. So we could do a little little pretty, right. maybe even beautiful. just a little do, 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 on the top, and that is good to go. Okay. And then all we need to do is have our handsome little turkey come out. Okay. So actually, so you can see better. I'm going to do this like this. All right, and the turkey is just this. about ready to come out. So I'm going to turn this timer off. Okay, so the turkey has been blasted, is what I say. <laughs> um, it's really oh, gorgeous. Oh, that is a gorgeous turkey. The vegetarian said the turkey's gorgeous, so that's pretty promising. So would you shut that for me, yep. please? Thank you. Can I All turn right. this off now? No, no, oh, no. The, oh, because it's going back in. Pardon. Going back Sorry. in. Okay, so here you have the turkey uh, ready for its roasting. I call it its blanket. This is the one I wanted you to see just how funky it is after it's, after it's used. That's what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to discard this rather than use it again. And I'm going to use a new one. Yeah. So that was that cheesecloth? What that was wasn't cheese. I haven't been able to find cheesecloth. It looks like cloth. a towel almost. It is. It's one of my oh. towels, one of my all, you know, cotton. Um, kitchen towel? Kitchen towel. Yeah. And that you don't want to use terry cloth or anything like that. Um, we would be even, eating like, terry cloth. Like turkey. our bar mops, you know, our bar mops that we use oh, at yeah. Highfield. We don't yeah. want to use those. Um, so this is just uh, um, chicken stock, low salt if possible. And here's my kitchen towel. And I'm going to soak this. Just soak it. So soaking it and putting it over the turkey helps it from drying when it's back mm -hmm. in the oven mm -hmm. and gives it, mm -hmm. and it's absorbing that mm -hmm. flavor from the stock as opposed to using water. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to baste it. So this is like you your, don't that's, have to do anything ah. more to this. You know, and my serve safe training says to me, something about this isn't right. My serve, you know, what are we doing? Uh, but like I said, because I've been doing it for yes. 45, 50 years, I really do think that uh, it works. And if it ain't broke, I'm not going to fix it. So if you want an extra turkey, or if you want to do your Thanksgiving turkey like this, um, I prefer that the turkey is a little more puffed up like this baby, um, as opposed to sorry, you, uh, um, who is <laughs> a little deflated. Um, but, uh, but remember It's that all good. It's all good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So here we have our We always towel. want the aesthetic of the, the perfect thing that we see on the Swanson oh, broth absolutely. in commercial, right? Well, Norman Rockwell. <laughs> Norman I mean, let's, Rock, you know. Rockwell, yeah. And here's reality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is our turkey going to, to sleep. To turn the oven down now, you said? No, not yet. Leave it on for, I okay. like to leave it on until I um, put it in, and I then see. I turn it down. Got it. Okay. All right, and then any extra wine or anything that you have. You want to make so sure. So wine would just give it a little bit different flavor. A little bit different flavor. We didn't use wine in my programs because of the uh, issue of psychiatric medications, but we did find that the chicken Pretty broth much. worked good reason. just yeah. fine. All right, so this is ready to be covered very tightly with foil. Ah, so we have your foil and over here. Thank you. This one. Yeah, <laughs> Where? Is this going to get on the side, this, this foil? Can you reuse that? Oh, no, I've got better foil. I've got better newer foil, foil but uh, who knows? I put it in the drawer. Okay. Getting used to the kitchen. <laughs> it's like we're hanging out at home. 18 months is a long time. Yeah. All right. So, so I we're curious about all of you who are watching how much you cooked during the shutdown. The pandemic. The, yeah. the quarantine. That part of the pandemic. I think we're still in it. But the, um, the, uh, Time when we couldn't leave our homes. <laughs> that part right. when we were on what was it called? It was called lockdown, right? It was called lockdown. It was quarantine. Called lockdown. Yeah. Quarantine, yeah. Crazy. And I um, certainly did a lot of food columns on uh, sourdough. We all turned to sourdough. You know what's funny? I think I'm the only person in the world who did not make a sourdough okay. starter. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah you would have called me for one, I'm sure. So. Yep, I, and I will. Because <laughs> that's one of my goals is to get one of those done. All right, we do not want any air escaping from this. We want it to stay as airtight as possible. So I'm going to just nice. put one more on top. If you would just sure. take that mm -hmm. for me, thank you. Just because I didn't fold over some of these pieces. Um, 
wrapped I think up, we're in wrap good up shape. the baby. Okay, turkey. Yeah. All right, okay. I'll put it back in. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And we turn it down to 450. Down to 450. Okay, so bake 450. Oh, start. And it's almost four o'clock. So just around 5.30, we will turn the oven off mm -hmm. and not open it. And this place is going to smell terrific. Mm. And we are um, going to have a nice turkey tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. All right, so let's move on, shall we, to dessert? Dessert time. Dessert time. All right. Favorite, so. favorite time. Yes, I love dessert. As I so have gotten older, I have gotten more enamored of desserts. Sorry to say. Yum. Well, we have a fun one today, and there are mini brownie pumpkin cheesecake, <laughs> pumpkin <laughs> cheesecake mousse parfaits. Say that 10 times fast. Cherry pumpkin brownie mousse mini parfaits. Mini brownie pumpkin <laughs> cheesecake <laughs> okay, mousse parfaits. Is that right? So, well, we can add cherries too if we want to. So, our ingredients called for heavy whipped, uh, whipped cream, pumpkin cheesecake mousse, and um, a chocolate mm. surprise, of course. So I started mm -hmm. with um, whip, making whipped cream. So I'm gonna pull that out of the fridge because we're gonna be using that in just a second. So this is not vegan, but you can use, I just found it and I'm thrilled because I love whipped cream, but whipped cream doesn't love me, is now Silk makes a dairy-free whipping cream. Oh, wow. So I'm really excited about this, but I'm going to make this for me. But it'll whip up the same. We were, this summer, we were, um, I was with some friends and we were trying to make whipped cream just from coconut milk and it just doesn't whip. So it's really nice to have some other alternatives. And uh, I'll just add to that that there are so many options now because there's so many people um, eating differently, certainly eating more plant-based. So we have our um, Whipped cream, which is May just, I just heavy. interrupt yeah, for yeah, a quick second. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been heading more towards plant-based at Highfield. I think um, everybody is looking to uh, to eat a little bit more um, thoughtfully. And uh, this summer, Michelle came and cooked on our grill. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, she did a, a plant-based. Uh, she did a chili that was probably one oh, of the chili. best chilies oh, I have you. ever had in my life, and it was tofu. And I am not a tofu pan yep. fan. Pan. <laughs> or pan. <laughs> or pan. Yeah. So the but tofu it was made because it's like terrific. a crispy, yeah. So how did you do that? You crumbled the tofu? I crumbled the tofu and baked it. So it was baked off first, and it okay. was baked. It was marinated and then baked, and it was marinated with, now I have to think back to that, it was a dry rub. Yeah, you were and sprinkling it, it on, too. Yep, as you it was did. a dry rub, and then the chili was a pretty straightforward, you know, beans, tomatoes oh. kind of thing. It and then with... Um, no meat stock, no nothing else in there, and then it was great. and the spice blend, of course, and then the tofu was added, and it just it came out really good. I was really happy with it. I that took too. this really tiny little spoonful, thinking that I wasn't going to like it, and I found myself looking for my soup spoon to be able to eat more and more. It's pretty it much an good. honor when Gail Blakely yeah. likes a chili. Just going <laughs> to sure. stay. That thank makes you. it. That was thank a little. You. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Back to dessert. Back to dessert. And most important part of the meal, in my eyes. So this is made up of three different components. Components. One is whipped cream, one is the mousse, and I'm going to keep folding, I'm going to fold a little bit more whipped cream in to show you that. And then we're going to put them together in these cute little dishes. I don't know what we would call those dishes. What would you call them? We thought we would drink scotch out of them, but we're not <laughs> sure. So here's our little dishes. Well, instead of scotch today. Well, today we might have some, I don't know, um, tea, iced tea. Okay. <laughs> So what I did with these two is I've already added the bottom layer, which is a brownie layer. And the brownies can be anything you want them to be. The recipe here, it's a layer of chocolate brownie, and then the pumpkin cheesecake mousse, and then white whipped cream on top, and then a little garnish. And it's just a simple little small dessert. When Thanksgiving meal is over. How does everybody feel, mm. right? So you take a moment, Do you breathe, see that piece you watch, of pie. you I'm don't want to see no, the des time for dessert and all this stuff comes out and like your eyes are like, yeah, this looks so good. But why do we spend like the next three days in bed <laughs> kind of recouping, <laughs> right? So uh, a dessert like this, where it might take a little bit more effort just to 
put them into dishes. A lot of us aren't having big Thanksgivings anymore, so this is a really great option as Good. well to do Good. single servings. Mm -hmm. And then you don't feel so guilty eating a little one. And, people and you get all your flavors. Love single servings. People they love single think servings. They just think they are the cutest yeah. little things. I do these green bean bundles in bacon. Oh, yeah, yeah. In bacon, but uh, the bacon is wrapped um, around the, bacon the green is wrapped bean. Around yeah. them and, and people just love them. I mean, it's six green beans and wrapped in bacon. And well, it's bacon. No, it's cute. It's bundles. It's cute. It's a bundle, it's yeah. Cute. yeah. It's yeah. cute. Yeah, yeah. And these are going to be very cute. So these are ahead. cute. Oh, our oven is working. Okay. So Tom is in there. So our next couple of things are we're going to add. So the brownies, I will say, I just they're store bought. The brownies are store bought. You can make them ahead of time if you want to. This is a great dessert to make ahead of time as well because everything can chill. And the brownies and you can should. just buy. Yeah, and it yeah. should. It should. They should be really cold. Um, so. Whipped cream is standard whipped cream. Heavy cream, powdered sugar and vanilla. Beat it, you can put it in your KitchenAid or put it with a hand beater. You can actually use an immersion blender. I have one that has a whisk at the bottom, but I didn't want to use that. Mm -hmm. But it, it'll, it'll, you want to create as much air as possible for, for homemade whipped cream. I highly recommend homemade whipped cream. It takes two seconds and it's so much better than Cool Whip. Just saying, and it's better for you. Natural ingredients. Um, I like both, I like them together. Ooh, that's a good idea. Cool Whip folded into that's pretty good. Oh, let's try that. <laughs> huh. And then there's Cocoa Whip, which is the right. co the coconut version of Cool Whip, All which right. is yeah, really, and that's that? actually good frozen. It's almost okay. like eating ice cream. Right. We're getting off topic a little bit, okay. but it's really good. Okay. Um, and that might work, that flavor actually of the coconut might, act, might work in this dessert. So the mousse itself is um, cream cheese, and I was raised with Tempty cream cheese. I'm going to show you the container because the pink one. The pink one. I love it. Tempty cream cheese. Were you raised in New York? No, I was raised in Framingham, okay. the New York of Massachusetts, I okay. guess. But okay. Tempty cream cheese, the best stuff ever. It's whipped. It's so good on bagels. A nice schmear. It's delicious. So Tempty cream cheese because it's a whipped cream cheese. Personally, some people like Philadelphia. I don't like the flavor of Philadelphia. It has a lot of tang to it. And I like the whipped of the Tempty. That's all I'm going to say about cream cheese. Um, powdered sugar, a can of pumpkin puree, which just looks like a can of pumpkin puree. Which and is I good because you use the whole can and you don't have any leftovers. Exactly. Use the whole can. So a whole can, half the container of the cream cheese or four ounces. Um, powdered sugar and a little vanilla and pumpkin pie spice. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice, um, you can use um, a mix of cinnamon, allspice, clove. Let me see if I can remember them all. Cinnamon, There's all five spice, of them clove, that are in there. Yeah. Um, I have it written down. Can't think of it. I was going to say um, nutmeg. We said nutmeg, nutmeg, yep. Cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, clove, and allspice. I forgot about the ginger. Okay, this is like naming the seven dwarfs. It is, seriously. <laughs> so if you don't have, um, all, which you brought me allspice, because I didn't have allspice at home, so we could add all those together. Um, so you don't have to spend the money on pumpkin pie spice. Most of us in our pantries have cinnamon. We have, uh, mm -hmm. some have clove. It's ground mm -hmm. clove. So you're just adding powders together and just about equal portion of it's each. It's the same as poultry seasoning. Yeah. Um, just put it together yourself and there, yep. you know, you can either get it online or any basic cookbook really gives you that too. Exactly. Um, apple pie spice, same thing. What's the difference, I wonder, between apple pie spice and pumpkin pie spice? Um, you know? I do. Okay. Okay. You might have to hold for me to Google that. <laughs> We'll, we'll come get up back with to it. that. We'll, we'll get, get back, back to that. that. There's okay. one difference in apple okay. pie spice and there's for the life of me, I can't remember it. If anyone in the peanut gallery out there knows, then let okay. us know. So, I um, just was in uh, yeah. North Carolina, as you were too. Yes. And uh, I picked up a, uh, an apple pie spice that was actually called a fall seasoning spice. And it had mm. all of the ones that you just mentioned. And it had fenugreek in it. And what a difference it made. Yeah. Interesting to add it fenugreek. It added a very... Huh. Sort of, I don't know, as you're going to say, qua, just a little bit of a something or other to uh, um, to what I yeah. was. I found myself even mixing it with butter and putting it on toast because it was so good. Oh, that so, sounds delicious. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to get that from you too. Okay. I have a list of things I need okay. from you. All right, so we, okay. won't, uh, we won't Google what we were going to Google, but. Uh, it's the apple pie spice. We'll come back with it. Clove, cinnamon. Urgh. Something. So, it's not ginger. There's no ginger in apple pie spice. There's something we'll in place of the ginger. Okay. It'll hit us in a second. Okay. Might be not cardamom. But anyway, so if you can see this bowl, there are some white streaks. It's because I haven't finished folding. So I'm actually going to take a spoon, the handy spoon from right here. I'm just going to take a little bit more. And all I'm doing with the, it's just the. Let me take the. Okay. Get away. 
So you just body. So folding, you cut down the center and flip. Cut down the center and flip. If you watch Schitt's Creek, this is folding, when David had to fold in the cheese. What's folding? I don't know, fold in the cheese. It was a whole thing. It kind of looked like this, too, because they were making enchiladas. Wasn't that a wonderful program? Oh, my God, it's the best. So you do this until the streaks are gone, which is pretty much... And then I get impatient and mix a little bit more, but it's light. So you can see that it's, it's lightened up a little bit. The color when I started the pumpkin pie is the, um, the pumpkin puree is very orange because it's pumpkin. And then you're adding the cream cheese to it for that nice cheese flavor. That Why delicate. wouldn't you whisk it in? Because it you breaks deflate the it, right? exactly. It, it'll deflate the um, the lightness that you're trying to create from the whipped cream. So the whipped cream again is nice and light. The starter does off as a carton of heavy cream, and I'll look at it. Right. Okay. So we have to put it together. Brownies that have been mushed into the bottom of the jars, mm -hmm. and then I'll take a pastry bag. Oh, we're going to get very fancy. We're very here. very fancy. One of. Um, my dad had a client and she was a pastry chef and she went to France and brought me back these lovely pastry bags from France. So anytime I can pull them out, anytime I have an occasion, I say, I'm going to use my pastry bag. Are They're they from France. usable or are they, they are they reusable, yep. So it's if you want to feel it too. It's this like. Oh, that's really nice. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. What and does I it say on it? It's something in French. Okay. Material de cuisine. Um, oh, Delarin. That's where we all go if we go to Paris for oh. supplies. Well, um, there you go. A wonderful place, yeah. Cool. Rue, Rue Coquillier, I think, in Paris. And that says kitchen material. Kitchen material, yeah. With a rooster on it. Which has a rooster. Good. Matches our turkey, I guess. So <laughs> thank you to my dad's friend for giving me these pastry bags that I haven't been able to use. And I didn't put a tip in because I don't really need one. I'm just going to layer in some of the mousse. So it doesn't, and I'll hold it over the bag in case it starts coming out the bottom. <laughs> it whoops, or ends up on the stove. I mean, hold it over the, um, over I'm the gonna, bowl. I think I'm gonna just start okay. with these two. Okay, I'm so, gonna clean up after you here. All right, so then I'm just, I'll pipe this in a little bit. You can pipe it in any way that you want to pipe it in. It's nice to let it set for a little bit too, so it's maybe a little bit firmer. It's a little loose. It's a little loose. But that's okay. So when you're making this at home and putting this these together, good. you'll have, you'll be letting it sit for a little bit longer. All right. So just for now, I'll let these guys be it. I want to lick my finger so bad, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> and then what I did pick up were some of these brownie crisps. And you can take the brownie, they're, and they're gluten-free. They're just the Nature's Promise brand. But I picked these up for garnish. So then you would just dollop some of the cream on top. Oh, that looks wonderful. They're cute. So whoop, that one got more whipped cream. That's OK. So I, whoop, I'll put a little bit more. And then you're going to decorate, you just, it, yeah, with we'll decorate it with a little Yeah, we'll decorate it with a little little chocolate crisp on top. We have so, so many products available to us now. So it's much good stuff. Unbelievable. And just go like that. Wonderful. Those are beautiful. They're cute. Boop. Gorgeous. Yeah, and then you can put these right with your coffee or tea and anything that you're and serving. And a whole tray of those a whole would tray. Look yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do those two for now okay. and you know, All here's nice. a sample. Like here's a white platter, so maybe you would Put it on there. Put it right on here. You could have them individual on little serve on their own little mini servers and serve them if you wanted to. If you want to keep things easy, then you could certainly do. Um, if you want to make it um, easy on yourself, you would just and like you could put them on a table. Yeah. Oh yeah, put some greens. There you go. Okay. Make it pretty. You could also Flowers. take a few extra cookies. Oh, nice. The little brownie okay. crisps. Yeah. All right. So. Chocolate's very important. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Great dishes. Thank you very much. I have one piece I want to just add before yeah. I dig my spoon into that. <laughs> and we, uh, we invite people in if they would like to have samples, uh, is to talk about the gravy. 
Excellent. Because yes. a lot of people have trouble with uh, um, gravy at Thanksgiving, and I don't know. You know, it's not uh, um, maybe I'm not a purist about it. I don't, you know, do the stock forever. And, oops, we lost something in advance. Uh, so what this is is this is a, um, a couple of cups, two cups of just plain chicken broth made with a uh, made with a bouillon cube. No, yeah, a bouillon cube for this one. I used the carton before. You saw me do that for the, for the um, turkey. For the turkey. But this is uh, the bouillon cube, and uh, and then I added horror of horrors. I added a packet of gravy mix. The brand I like is a French brand, um, so. I try to get that as much as I can, and uh, um, added that to the cold, which is what it says. It says add the dry ingredients to cold water, so I added it to the chicken stock. And then what you're going to have from your wonderful turkey who's in there sleeping away right now, you are going to have some wonderful um, gelatinous drippings, the fond, we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is probably left over from um, the butter that went on the turkey, all of the seasonings, mm. and then the chicken broth. And this is also what I'm going to add um, to this. And let it just all melt in. And there you have um, your And it goes fast, too. It melts gravy. so fast. Yeah, it's really... Really nice. Yeah, gravy is one of those funny things. Like some people make a really good gravy. Some people are known for their gravy. When when Thanksgiving, I went, I fed at the uh, Pine Street Inn, and right. I was in charge of the gravy. Okay. So I'm five two. I'm not that tall. So no lie, I was on a step ladder for the biggest pot I've ever seen in my life and mixing it. It's something you would see like in Ratatouille or one of those movies, but I was like <laughs> on, the, on this thing, like looking into the gravy and stirring it up and then wow. just, you know, one of the most wonderful things I think in humbling experiences is to, uh, yeah, see what is to serve. Absolutely, I worked yeah. at Rosie's place for yep. many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I loved it. So I want to bring this up to a boil. And what I'm going to do is just quickly um, carve a little piece of turkey, and we are going to just show you how we might serve this. So here is our turkey, and I'm going to put make a little hot turkey sandwich here. I remember going to um, we'd have Thanksgiving dinner. And then, you know, we'd have a few drinks and, and all that fun stuff because it's Thanksgiving, which I think fills you up even more personally, mm -hmm. <laughs> but delicious, right? It's enjoying. And then my brother-in-law and I used to go to the Rentham outlets <laughs> at midnight and we would wait in line for an hour to get into, um, into the parking lot. And they used to do a midnight madness where all the stores would open at midnight. Oh, I, don't, cool. I don't even, oh my God. We did it for a few years. We did really well the first year, had a ball. The second year we went and we were like, eh. And then we went again, we got there, couldn't find parking, drove around for an hour and turned around and drove back home. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but we would end up doing what Gail's doing and we would go into my mom's fridge, what can we make? Or half the stuff wouldn't even make it into the fridge, but we would make little turkey sliders <laughs> or I would make vegetable sliders, of course, but the little rolls or whatever you have yep. on hand. Yep. And, and make there, a little, ooh, that looks good. we have just a little bit of the, um, of the gravy. What I'm gonna do That's is awesome. gonna put it on that. And would you get me two more spoons like this from that drawer, please? Mm -hmm. And here we have our little turkey sandwich. <laughs> People are liking this, I guess, huh? Okay, so there we have a nice couple bites of turkey sandwich. And yeah. if you don't mind, I'm going to serve this. Yeah, Is that okay? sure, sure. Let me take the knife salad. off. Of here. Oh, thank you. A little salad on some radicchio. Actually, let's do it this way. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like a little vehicle. So I would uh, take go. a leaf and then add all this stuff and yep. roll it up and eat it like rather that. Than, well, rather <laughs> than do it as I just did. Everything is beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful Brussels sprouts. With some cranberries. Actually, oh, I garnished I just saw it with those, cranberries yeah. so we can like, actually eat some from? of those. Raw cranberries are not bad. We coat them in sugar oftentimes mm -hmm. at the holidays, and then they're even better. But... Uh, um, so there you have, I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, the gravy looks great. Um, a fairly decent gravy. 
Yes, you can do it all from scratch, and yes, it's probably even better. But you know, sometimes if it ain't broke, not I'm with you on point, that. You know, yeah, it's just getting life is getting a little too crazy. I think there's other things I'd rather do than make my own. And the whole thing too, and you gave a really good point, Gail. Like we think that a lot of the things we have to do, we, like everything has to be from scratch. Or my mom's recipe, or my grandmother's recipe, mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. it's a holiday. We have mm -hmm. to do this. We have to do that. And you mm -hmm. know what? Give yourself a break. <laughs> You know, we've had a really, really hard 20 months, and you know, now it's time to kind of sit back and enjoy where we can hopefully be with family again. So, so here we have Michelle's wonderful pumpkin mousse with brownie surprise. A little bit of a plate with a turkey sandwich, but of course you could serve the turkey however you want. He has a spoon in and his butt. He has a spoon <laughs> in his butt, and uh, you can hold that one, which says gather, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hold this one which says thankful. thankful. So we are thankful to be back. Um, we hope that you gather with us again. Falmouth is still cooking, and I look forward to many more shows. Thank you. And Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Yeah, you are terrific. This is great. Thanks, Gail. We'll do it again. Okay. Yes, we will. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Cooking in Falmouth is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware.